So the reason for showing a video of this particular job is that this turbine is running at the maximum pressure we approve. This has a static pressure of 160 meters of head, as you can see on the gauge. That is the limit not only of this turbine, it's also the limit of the plastic pipes that feed it. So the actual head on this site is 220 meters, uh, but what we've done is put a pressure brake tank um, at the correct place to ensure that we get 160 meters at this end. Now at 160 meters, this will be the noisiest any of our products can be. So it's a good test. Uh, any product running at less head will be significantly less noisy. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on. We're going to measure the noise. Okay, so noise is important. We don't want to disturb the neighbours. We want a happy customer. So it's very important to check noise levels and make sure they're acceptable. We're standing two metres away from the hydro turbine and we'll take a reading. That is 66 dB. You can hear the noise levels. This is a double insulated enclosure for the hydro turbine. Noise levels are very, very low. You can hardly hear it. So we're very happy with the way it's gone. Um, in this particular job, there's a house very close to the site and we need to keep noise levels down. But um, on a day like today with a light breeze, you can't even notice it at the house. Let's talk about a battery enclosure. Batteries are hazardous and you need to be in an enclosure, two big vents at the front, two big vents at the back, all the appropriate battery settings, warning signs, warning signs, log book for battery warranty available, the other things that should be handy, fire extinguisher, smoke alarm. So in this case it's a 24 volt system, uh, nowadays it's more common to put in a 48 volt system. And also within the enclosure we've got top up water, safety glasses, gloves and any equipment that might be needed for maintenance is all stored in here. Keeps it nice and tidy, can then be locked and children are kept out of it. So that's the battery enclosure, doesn't have to be anything flash, just made out of plywood, well ventilated and secure, that's the main thing. As for the outback system, um, this is a 3 kilowatt. 24 volt system. It's a pre-wired outback which means it comes in a box all ready to go. What we've done is added some emergency breakers. So in this case if we were to pull one of these handles all the power would be shut down so the inverter AC would turn off and also the hydro turbine would be disconnected. Um, so we've just added those below straight into an outback system this is a, a hydro controller, it's referred to as an FM80 and this uh, controls the, uh, the power from the hydro turbine and does maximum power point tracking. And it has been getting up to 1.3 kilowatts, but the house is using almost no power, the batteries are full, this heat is going on which is 750 watts. So the controller has backed off and said well I only need 1000 watts. So if once the house gets completed and more appliances are put into the house, and that's another ongoing project. Uh, then of course this will go back up to full power of about 1300 watts. Obviously the Mate 3 here displays what's going on uh, and, and obviously in time will produce graphs so you could go in hit graph and a graph would appear for your history. Obviously we've only just started this system so there's no data there yet. Um, and that's it. Here's a battery monitor. It, it shows that the batteries are almost full um, and they'll be fully charged in the next few hours uh, and then we have our diversion of surplus power to hot water so there's a little fan cooled SSR that's controlled by the auxiliary relay um, in the hydro controller that will then go off to the hot water tank in the house until the hot water tank is put in the house we're using just an air diversion heater um, 
and it, obviously it's pretty warm in here because of this so this is going at the moment it's full on taking about 750 watts that will then be moved into the hot water tank and of course that will provide ample water hot water for a house so that's it in a nutshell so i hope this overview uh, and short video that uh, has been put together for you gives you an insight into what's involved in installing a hydroelectric system and how to do a good job because um, it's a system and every single component in that system the intake the pipe the joiners how the pipe is laid the turbine how the turbines mounted the exhaust water how you get that back to the river how you cable it how you put your batteries in your battery enclosure your inverter how all that's set up it's important that every single step you get correct and a job like this has taken um, three people approximately three days to put in and when we arrived the pipe was in the ground but other than that we've had to put in all the electrical cables build all this equipment make a suitable power shed put all the equipment in so that gives you an idea of how much time would be involved in a project like this thank you for watching